Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Just a quick one. <clears throat> We've just um, brought this vehicle back from a trip recently and we're in lockdown. We are locked in the cage. So, <laughs> basically what we're going to do is we've got a couple, we've got a few sets of wheels and tyres here and a few Prado, that sort of thing. So, these awesome all-terrain tyres, we want to keep maximum tread depth here for when they're used off-road because the more rubber we've got here, the more t protection we've got through to a puncture. Uh, so we've got another set of road tires here. They're not very good, but they're good enough. They're roadworthy, I think just. But um, set of Grand Craps, or Grand Tracks, you should say, because what they're really good for, they're really good for when you're driving on the road. And it looks like that's mostly what we'll be driving on until further notice. So we're gonna save a bit of rubber on these. And I thought I'd do a little video and give you a few little pointers and tech tips. I'm sure you know how to change wheels and tires, but a lot of you these days now, you've probably got one of these, and it's also gonna give you a bit of feedback on this row, because people did ask. It was fairly new to me, I don't know, about a year ago. Um, I avoid a lot of removing wheel and tire type work, because wheels and tires are heavy, and mate, I'm not in my 20s anymore, so that's for the young guys to do. Um, not that I can't do it, as you'll be able to see in a minute. And I did actually, show this up when I um what when did I get that it was about a year ago actually yeah it was about a year ago so you know it's looking pretty good for a year isn't it that's how many wheels and tires I put on and off <laughs> it says 2019 on it even so what we'll do to take them off look I'll just show you no you got three settings right can you see that right you got one two three three's the most powerful it's crazy I can't remember it might be 300 newton meters or something so you don't want to just do them up on three so i'll give you some tips right try number one to undo it let's just for example i'll show you number one to undo it did you see how quick and easy it zipped it off that's all you need right now let's undo it on number two not much difference really you can take these caps off caps off if you like i don't because you don't really need to um but look you can if you like there's a little cash you don't know there's a little screwdriver slot there right to pop it off it's not in here i think it might be in two of them or is it in yeah opposite sides one there one there right but the thing is when you lever it your screw over might hit your wheel and you might scratch your wheel so i just think it's unnecessary let's take it off at number three just to see what happens didn't really sound any different on any of those did it so a bit interesting let's go again three it makes a difference when you put them back on that's for sure go back to number two That one was a bit slower, you notice. So I put all the, always have put the wheel nuts on. Right, so wheel nuts up on the step is easy. They're right there, you know where they're gonna go. Um, take your time placing it on there. There's no, see, people in a rush, they think they're on, um, I've used, who did I use last time in a video? Dick Johnson, they think they're in Dick Johnson's pit crew. It's not who can do it the fastest, it's who can do it without scratching the wheels and the caps, okay? So, Depending on your setup, look, I, I will go through what I find the easiest way to put the wheels on. The problem we got is, I'm going to be honest here, mate, I'm on holidays still, okay? I'm doing a video for you when I'm on holidays. Look, I'm changing the wheels, getting a few things done before back to work, and I'm in very casual dress, tracky duct and everything, and I'm going to try not to get dirty here, so I'm going to make it look awkward, right? But your best bet is to use your body, you know, with your pants and stuff, your legs, you know, like... If you grab the spokes at the top here, you can kind of use your legs. Look, I'm holding it there. It's not really... And then it's the same putting it back on again, right? But we're not going to show you putting it back on with this one. We'll just take it off. I'll just put that one aside for a minute. While you've got it off, it's probably always an idea to have a look at your brakes properly. Okay, so... Get yourself a light and just have a look at the back there. You can see the brake pads. The thickness of the meat between the backing plate and the disc is what you're looking at. Um, if you've been on a trip, it can always be the case if you've had a lot of mud and stuff get in here, it can act as sandpaper with the pads and wear them out quite quickly, particularly if they're not genuine. The genuines do seem to last longer. Um, I've got to be honest, the genuine pads in the 120 and the genuine original pads in this vehicle, they squeal their heads off for me and I'll get around to doing a video on that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm the only person. Who else has noticed? This will be interesting. Put a comment if you've noticed you've got genuine brake pads and on 
particularly cold mornings maybe. Um, definitely when the car and the brakes are cold, particularly when reversing, but not just reversing, also going forwards. I'll do a video on this for you. Um, who's noticed that the, um, that the rear brakes squeal really badly? Surely I'm not that lucky. So on the 120, we put a set of genuine pads in because we're sick of the Bendix not lasting long enough. And they are definitely lasting longer, but they really squeal. I even put another set of rotors on. They're okay until they bared it in and they started squealing again. So that is disappointing. And I thought, geez, maybe I'm just too soft on the brakes. You know what I mean? Um, the other thing I noticed, bang, new car. You know what I mean? New car, same thing. But not until it got to about 15. It's just more recently, 20,000 K sort of thing. Anyway, go and grab one of those um, other wheels and tyres around here. Now the best way to put the wheels on is place them dead square like that and then start your wheel nuts. It's as simple as that usually. It'll probably make a liar of me but you know there's easy ways to do things and there's hard ways to do things. You don't let it go like that and then try and get the nuts on because it's not going to work. You need to keep it up where it's meant to be and look how easy they'll all start. It's really easy. Piece of cake of potato cake. Right. The reason I'm doing this is Look how pox these tyres look compared to the BFGs, yeah? Sometimes you've got to give the wheel a bit of a jiggle. There's a few different wheels on the Prados. And currently, just 100% make sure you've got them started. I knew that was going to happen, so it only happens in videos. That never happens, okay? That never happens, but I heard it squirming around. It wasn't happy. So we'll leave that off for now. We're going to set it on number one. We want our leaf fork, right? We've definitely got them all started. So get that wheel in square, ideally, and just go slowly. Oh, wrong way. And do not press the go button on that. This is another way you can do it, actually. Make sure it's on doing up first. <laughs> How not to do things, okay? Once you've got one in, like that, just nicely, you can do that. That's another way we sometimes do it. Put one nut on, zip that in just nicely, make sure it's all square, and then look, all these will just be really, really simple. So look, on number one, I'm just gonna go. Make myself look like a real amateur, because that's what I am. Um, Basically, when you do up wheel nuts, you know, there's this go opposite thing going on, and that's what you're meant to do. But the problem is, the real reason that all started is because, you know, you kind of need to go there and you need to go there to get make sure wheels pull on sometimes. And that is the case. But I can tell you now, once it's all the way in like it is now and you know it's all the way in, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, you just get into this, you just get into this habit, all right? Now, on number one, you're pretty safe, guys. You could probably go, oh, it's still got a lot of kick. I, I would not pull the... It's still got a lot of kick, so I wouldn't stand there with your finger on the trigger. Oh yeah, I mean, that's probably safe, okay? Yeah, that feels all right. What are this one? The bottom one, I didn't really... Yeah, so number, number one... Number one, you're pretty safe. It's not gonna, you're not gonna over tighten the wheel nuts, right? But I'd prefer you just did them, look, you know, I'll undo them again for a second. Right, I'd just prefer to go. Yep, it's all the way in. They're probably about 80 Newton meters. The positive is you can drop it onto the ground. You get your torque wrench. You don't need anything super special. Any basic torque wrench will probably be fairly accurate enough to do the job for you. See, it turns on the ground, guys. The key thing is you've got to make sure the wheels are all the way in before they're on the ground, which we know they are. The negative to doing that is if you forget to torque them, okay, so 
when it comes to wheel nuts, there really it needs to be a triple check. It really does need to be a triple check, okay? So if you forget to torque the wheel nuts, then you're in trouble because you've only got 80 Newtons. They're going to come loose. So for that reason, I've been doing this a long time. I like number two. Certainly not number three. Number two is good. All right, and I'll sort of go. Hang on. Wrong way. We'll do, do them up. And that just went a little bit more, and that's probably around the 100 or so bit of thereabouts. When she hits the ground, and I do this, I'm going to get very little, okay? Now, it just comes down to experience. I've put a lot, a lot of wheels on and off over the years, okay? Thousands of wheels, a lot of experience, and not that much experience with this rattle gun. So you've got to think that this impact drive, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, you've got to think how experienced, how well do you know that tool, okay? So... When you put these back on, just make sure you've got them all lined up nice and square. It's just a quick like that, and it shouldn't go anywhere. Now, every now and then when you're putting them on, I shouldn't have said never before because it does happen. Every now and then when you're putting them back on, you know, the wheel moving around. So I was messing around a bit, right? Normally I bring the wheel, you know, I've got the, not dirty, but I've got the work clothes on and I'm, you know, sort of straight up and into it like this with a knee underneath and the hands at the side. And then the hand moves to the bottom of the tire, and bang, 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 and I'll have, and what, and it's all just legit, bang, straight on. As I said, always when you do a video, that's where things get messy. But we don't care. We just show you it's it's reality. It's what it is. It's what you can expect. Now, so I'm pretty confident that those wheel nuts aren't going to come loose. If I had to not use a torque wrench, I'm going to go a little bit more, a little bit more than that. I've left them what I believe is about 105, 110 somewhere there. I think they'd be okay right but i'll say it again if i couldn't use if when it was going on the ground i didn't have a torque wrench handy or whatever i'm in some dodgy outback workshop helping them fix the car because something fell off and you know i'm going to give it a bit more right i'm going to i'm going to take control there's too many uh, can't rely on people you know how it is anyway we won't go there the other checks we're going to do, so as soon as it hits the ground double check the setting on your torque wrench okay give it a click I suppose you've only double checked it. I said it's got to be triple checked. Well, double check's fine. But just think, did you click them? Make sure they're right. Make The double triple check is making sure that wheel is 100% sitting flush. Don't put the wheel on and it's cocked up sideways and then get your zzz onto one and it's kind of not quite on. And then you, because I've seen it, I've seen people do it where they hit the other one and for whatever reason, there's different wheels. Some wheels fit a bit. Look, Powder coated wheels, for example, powder coated adds maybe half a millimetre, depends on the thickness of the coating behind the wheel. And these are a really tight fit on the Toyota's, it helps keep the whole wheel square. That's how it's designed. So once you've added a layer there, beware, it may not fit over. You really need to file it down or clean it off so that it's down so that it fits on nicely. Because what happens is it won't be all the way in. And you'll do your torque setting, the wheel's not in. And of course, the weight of the car and driving, that will wear into that coating and cut it out. And then you'll end up with loose wheel nuts, okay? So you, there's cautions there. You've got to be really careful. And those aftermarket wheels and wheel nuts, good luck with those. Each to their own. This video is not about what wheels you want. Check your tyre pressures, okay? So your other set of wheels and tyres have probably been sitting around. Personally, I run different tyre pressures front to rear sometimes, depending on the loading of the vehicle. Sometimes it's heavier at the front, sometimes it's heavier at the rear, so it may vary. So just reset them all. I'm not going to tell you what pressures to run. Every tyre and every vehicle is different. What am I going to put into these? I'm probably going to run about, I don't know, 36 or something like that on these, which is over what they'd normally be. But um, I might get a little bit better fuel economy or something. So I might do a bit of R&D and leave them on 32 and see what happens. Oh, look, they're a bit worn on the edges. That's the other reason too. They're a bit worn on the edges, these ones, because someone had them on a dodgy car with a dodgy wheel on it with a whole dodgy setup. Yet, why do I say that? Because Prados don't wear tyres and they came up for Prado. So probably some dodgy suspension, three inch lift or something like that. So to get the middle of the tire to wear more, I'm going to run at least 36 to 38 in these because I want more pressure more from the middle of the tire and less on the edges, okay? They're still going to wear on the edges. You can't get the edges off the road, but by putting more pressure, you're going to apply more wear to the middle of the tire, particularly right in the center here. And you know, these haven't got much more left in them. They've got about, what have they got? They've got about three or four mil sort of thing. It's just a bit worn on the edges, which is okay. All right, guys, that's swapping over a tire with a few little um, bits of information there hopefully there's something there that helps you if there is give us a thumbs up 
subscribe, turn that bell on so you don't miss out on the next most important bit of information coming your way. As I said, it's like a big million piece jigsaw puzzle and there's heaps more pieces to come and perhaps I missed all these, sim this is a bit of a simple thing, I thought, you know, everybody knows that and I know that some of you and most of you maybe do but there's a lot of people that don't and you might, things you might, may not have thought of anyway. So, as I said, it's up to you if you want to take these off. Just make sure they're on properly. I'll give you another little tip with the, because I know a lot of people are watching everything. They want every piece in the jigsaw puzzle and they saw the painting the wheels. We've got a few painting wheels videos and whatever. Um, when painting the cat, right, people ask, how did I get that, you know, whatever. Okay, look, it's just paint, guys. So what you do is, if you want, there's two ways to do it. You don't try and take that badge off because you'll probably bust it. Not worth it, okay? Just ch -ch 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 paint it, right? I can tell you, good from far, but far from good. That, I'm happy with the paint job, definitely, 100%. I've done it twice, I'd recommend it to anyone. If you do the Outback Dirt tracks, you're gonna get little chippy bits on the wheels, right? Little stone, I can show you one of the other wheels eventually, another video. Um, but you do, but the thing is you can touch them up, like they're off now, you give them a clean and you just go ch -ch -ch and you touch it up. So who cares, mate, for 10 bucks a can, 20 bucks a can, whatever it is, right? Um, but what I'm saying is don't take that off. You just paint the thing ch -ch -ch lightly, like we did with this one. And then either when the paint's wet, still get a rag, dip it in some thinners, and just go like that with your finger, change another bit of rag, like that again. Don't worry about trying to get down on the edges of it, because you'll just wreck the paint work. You can't see it, guys, I'm telling you, I'm looking at it from 600 millimeters away, the closest you're ever gonna get to wheel and tire. Nobody's looking that close, it's just a set of wheels, all right? So just wipe the outside off like that, bit of thinners. You can even, if, if you're a bit nervous and you don't want to wreck your paint work because your rag's gonna to touch it, you're not that good with your fingers and whatever, then let it dry, because I did this on another job. Let it dry and then get your thinners. You just gotta rub a bit harder like that. It's actually could possibly even be better, right? You just give it a polish up and the paint comes off and you've got your Toyota badge because yeah, it definitely looks better with the Toyota badge. All right, so we're gonna check the tire pressures. How do we check the tire pressures? Well, simple. We don't rely on one gauge is the main thing. We don't rely on one gauge. So you check the tire pressure and double check it with it. I like the pencil gauges to be honest, but. So there you go, you know what to do. Bada bing, that's wheels and tires, changing, whatever. Like a Wally, thumbs up, subscribe, bell on. Bada bing, bada boom, catch up, see you guys. All right, so set the tire pressures all at 36 PSI, double checked. Um, we know how far we did up the wheels. One other little point I'd like to make, when you're tightening wheels, these will be okay, but some wheels, you need to nip them up before you drop the full weight of the vehicle. So we drop the vehicle down till the tire touches enough to stop it spinning, hopefully. And then, so I'll demonstrate, we get the right socket that way. That's the one, right? So we've got the torque wrench set on 113 Newton meters. And literally, right, so I don't care if you go around, the wheel's in all the way, right? It doesn't, what I'm trying to point out is, actually, if you want, you can even use an extension to get the short extension to get the wheel, get, the, get it away from the tyre, sorry. All right, so if you want, if you're not sure about that, you can just back it off again and just go again. Because better on the move, right, than, or was it that one? Just gently so you don't scratch anything. If you go clockwise, then you know you haven't missed any. On some other types of wheels and tires, you do need to go opposite, as I said, to make sure it's pulled in. You can go around and check it again if you like, but I can assure you that they're just all going to click straight away. As long as you can count to six. Or seven, or eight, or nine, or ten, or twelve, or whatever. You can keep going around as much as you like. Whatever you want. But that's how you do it. Alright? Double check them, triple check them, stop and think. Each time you do it, did I do it this time? Or was that last time? Because not good if you have wheel nuts come loose and a wheel go flying down the road. Could kill you, your family, someone else, and their family. Have a think about it. Safety, guys. Double check, triple check.